So two major media personalities have thrown a wrench into the gears of excitement for the upcoming Super Bowl in Vegas, predicting a disaster of cinematic proportions. Fans of Sin City, however, are ready to bet their bottom dollar that Vegas and Super Bowl are more like a royal flush than a busted hand. But could there be a Joker in the deck? So in this video, we're not just echoing the doomsday prophecies of Joe Buck and Boomer Esseson, two broadcasting giants who've cast long shadows of doubt over Be Vegas's big game. No, no, no. We're going to shuffle through the deck of history, examining the infamous rap sheet of professional athletes who gambled with their careers in Vegas. And we're going to cover the real-life crimes of some of the biggest names in sports and ask whether Joe and Boomer are somehow right in their worries. Yeah. Uh, the question isn't whether Joe and Boomer are playing with a full deck, is whether there's any merit to their cautionary tales. So stick around because we're diving deep into some of the most jaw-dropping and head-shaking moments involving athletes and the law right here in the City of Lights. So we gotta cue the spotlight right now on Joe Buck and Boomer Essiason. And these are two men who've made careers out of calling plays and they're now seemingly calling for doom. It's almost poetic that one of them is literally named Boomer. A name so on the nose, it feels like fate itself cast him in the role of a Vegas naysayer. But before we dismiss the two of them as old guys yelling at slot machines, let's consider their argument for a moment. Could there be a nugget of truth buried in their skepticism? Hi guys, my name is Steven. I'm your guide through the neon lit truth of Las Vegas. I'm not leaving Las Vegas, and if you're looking for unfiltered, unadulterated story of the reality of what really goes down in Vegas, unfiltered view of the city where we aren't afraid to tell the truth, sometimes the ugly truth, you're in the right place. So let's get started with all this. Now, first of all, Joe Buck took to the airwaves, not from the glitzy studios of Vegas, but from a St. Louis ESPN affiliate to prophesize a quote, big something was brewing. Not even coming to Vegas for the game, I personally have to wonder if his absence here is more a matter of economics than ethics. With ticket prices soaring out to the stratosphere for everything, one wonders, though, if a comped seat at the game in a free room would have turned his prophecy into a different frequency. So anyhow, Joe pulled no punches, stating the following, quote, There's going to be some story. There's going to be something that happens because it's Vegas and it won't stay in Vegas. It's going to be something big that happens. Joe then went on to pull some sort of virtue card, like he was trying to impress someone, adding the following, quote, I just think that is going to be a mess in my mind, he said adding that he's happy he won't be in Vegas to see it happen personally. Quote, I'm not that way, he said. I'm not looking for the maximum party and going out all night. It's just not my thing. And then when you combine that with Vegas, okay, whatever. And then there's Boomer Essiason doubling down on disaster. You know, he mused on the historical exclusion of Vegas from Major League Sporting events for a reason here, stating that they kept athletes out of Vegas because it causes nothing but problems. He said the following, quote, trouble, he told a reporter in the press room on Tuesday, quote, you know, they did keep all of the leagues out of here all those years for a reason. When you think about it, before all this gambling became legal. So his advice, <laughs> keep all the athletes quarantined in Arizona until game day, as if the mere air of Vegas could somehow lead them astray. But these broadcasters with their decades of experience, they seem to be playing their own game here. And I think that game is the Vegas effect. Attach yourself to Vegas controversy and watch as all the chips fall in your favor. Be it clicks on websites, views on videos, or just some good old-fashioned notoriety for your name. And let's face it, look, you're here watching this, soaking it up, every word I say, and I'm here bringing it all to you. So on that note, if you're here and you're liking the video so far, give it a like and also subscribe too. So you can keep getting the unfiltered real takes on Vegas. Not the shiny, high-gloss stuff that you only get on YouTube and other outlets, okay? Go ahead, hit the button, subscribe, do it. There you go. Now, don't you feel better now? So honestly, the real bet to place here is whether these Vegas veterans are holding a hand of aces or bluffing with a pair of twos. The history of athletes in Vegas reads like a cautionary tale. It's a rogues gallery of what not to do when your name lights up the marquees. From the 2007 All-Star Games police blotters to the tragic story of Henry Ruggs III, Vegas seems to have a gravitational pull on athletes, luring them into the orbits of chaos. Here's just a few examples. In 2007, when the NBA All-Star Game came to town, there were over 400 arrests made, and a bouncer was and paralyzed for life from the waist down by a member of the crew surrounding then NFL player Adam Pacman Jones. Metro didn't staff enough officers, and although at the time the co owner of the Sacramento Kings, George Maloof, called the Met with casinos to prep them for an influx of possible trouble, the city was plagued with violence 
and other incidents, leading to a black eye for the Strip. Of course, Henry Ruggs III came to Vegas and then drank so much that he rammed his sports car into a woman and her dog instantly taking their lives. And possibly because the police were so enamored with his celebrity, they failed to take a sobriety field test when they arrested him, even though Henry could reportedly barely speak or even walk. Henry, as a result, only got a few years in jail for those two deaths. But more incidents involving NFL players too, with Chandler Jones after he violated an order to stay away from a domestic partner he had been terrorizing. And this happened here in town, so maybe there is some sort of spell that is put on these players. Because these incidents are limited to Vegas Raiders players. Former superstar Marshawn Lynch got busted for DUI here as well. He said he doesn't drink and he doesn't do drugs. Have you ever seen anybody drive a car like that? That's pretty good. He drove it till the f***ing rim came off. <laughs> So here's the thing, okay? Right now, if you don't get out of the vehicle, you're going to be charged with obstructing an investigation. That is a criminal offense, and you will go to jail. What kind of obstructing? Obstructing. What kind of obstructing? Yeah, we're not going to explain There's it. There's not it. different kinds. There's why, only one kind. Explain it to me. Okay, because I've already explained it to you. Because I'm just... Failing to obey a command by an officer or lawful order is obstructing. That's so this is your last chance... Step out of the vehicle for us. Everything is understandable. Okay. So if you understand, go ahead and step out for us. Is why will I not be pulled out? There we go. All right. Go to get on your stomach. Go over. Hands behind your back. No more games today. What kind of games? Because I'm not moving. He does smell like alcohol. No, I do smell like alcohol. Yep. So right now you're yeah, being arrested for the suspicion oh, yeah. of DUI. And in 2022, Alvin Kamara was accused of beating another man unconscious at a strip nightclub. Even as recently as a few weeks before the Super Bowl, Janarius Robinson was busted for DUI on the strip. So it goes without saying that Vegas has some sort of strange spell over these athletes. And it isn't just the NFL and NBA. And trust me, I read the comments and I know what some of you are typing. Sadly, some of you are just about ready to type something about the race of all these athletes in the comments, but I want you to stop. Just stop it already. NHL players are not immune to this either. Jarrett Stoll of the NHL getting busted for having what we're going to call Coca-Cola Classic and something else named after the actress Molly Ringwald in his pockets at a day club on the strip. And while I can't find anything about Major League Baseball players right now, the athletics are coming to town. So as I say in the gambling world, all bets are off on this one. So as the Super Bowl descends on this desert mirage, one wonders if the league has its playbook ready, not just for the game, but for the spectacle that is Vegas. Will the athletes stay in bounds or will the city's infamous nightlife lure them into a fumble? And there's no doubt that the players involved in the game are almost certainly a safe bet to behave themselves. They work their entire lives to get here. Whether or not the other players not in the game, their entourage, or they're just their fans will actually behave themselves, that is something that remains to be seen. And for those of you descending on Vegas for the game in the weekend, a word of advice. Look, keep your head on a constant swivel. The city will be electrified, pulsating with more energy than a linebacker on a blitz. There'll be pickpockets, hustlers, and high rollers out in force looking to make their own scores. So don't get into stupid altercations. Stop and think before you place a bet with a three-card money dealer outside the casino and watch the video we did here just a few weeks ago about the sort of people you encounter in Vegas that might be dangerous for you when you're on the strip and you come to town. In Vegas, the Super Bowl may bring its share of drama, but the odds are the real action will be on the field, leaving the sidelines for the spectacle of halftime shows and commercials. So here's hoping the biggest headlines come from spectacular plays regular than off-the-field escapades for the sake of Vegas, the NFL, and fans everywhere. May the only disasters be those missed tackles and fumbled balls that caused the game to be won or lost. That's it for the video today. My name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. If you like this video, you want to get unadulterated, unfiltered truths about the city, short films and live streams, you'll click subscribe. And if you're watching this and you're one of the awesome people, say hello in the comments. I read the comments. I'd love to say hi back. And uh, you're the best part of my day as always. I appreciate you guys watching. Until the next one, coming very soon, we're going to say three, two, one, click. You're the best part of my day. I look at the camera and I say three, two, one, and click.